The reading for the sermon today is in the book of Proverbs. Uh, in so far, we looked at the theme of wisdom in the book of Job. Where can wisdom be found? Is that central question in the book of Job? And the book of Proverbs is written uh, as a book of wisdom, practical, concrete wisdom for living life. And it's uh, strategically directed toward young men to put them upon a path of growth in wisdom. I thought before we left Job, we would just take a quick stop here in the book of Proverbs and consider some of the rich wisdom themes, particularly how the book of Proverbs uh, culminate and set before us uh, our, our Lord Jesus Christ is a true son of his father who walked in wisdom. We'll be reading these texts in your uh, bulletin, Proverbs 1, 1 through 10. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. To give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Proverbs chapter 2, go ahead, starting verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight, raise your voice for understanding. If you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And then dropping down to verse 16, so you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her paths to the departed. None who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. And now chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Hear, O sons of father's instruction, be attentive that you may gain insight, for I give you good precepts, do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get insight, do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth, do not forsake her. She will keep you, love her, she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place in your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Hear my son, accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father God, now we do ask for wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God to the illumination of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we gravitate downward into darkness. O oh, Lord, raise us up, Lord, now by thy word and truth and the spirit of wisdom in Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. 
So the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom, and the focus is we have in here family wisdom. We, we just read here how even the author to the Proverbs said, well, my father taught me, and now I'm seeking to say, oh, son, listen to me. It's, it's generational truth, generational wisdom being passed down through families, and mothers are joined in Proverbs to their fathers. Uh, they're not uh, uh, somehow cut out of the picture. Now, though the father is taking the lead, the weight is upon the father, even as we find in Colossians 3 and Ephesians 5, the, the weight of discipline and instruction falls on the father, but the mother is there too as part of that discipline and instruction. And what's the focus is the fear of the Lord. To fear God, father to son, listen, learn. The idea here is to, is to grow, is to mature. He's a young man, he's simple, he's naive. He needs to advance to become a mature and wise man. That's the message. In learning to love wisdom. The father is directing his son's eyes to a certain lady. She's identified in the feminine, her. Wisdom becomes her. He's to be stirred up with attraction and allurement toward her and engage seeking her. And in that very process of pursuing lady wisdom, he's to avoid the alternatives. Is to avoid other lies and other loves, false words, false lovers. He's to avoid as he is to give chase to this other woman, Lady Wisdom. Well, the book of Proverbs itself, uh, just as a whole book, uh, has its own wisdom enigma, you might say, uh, uh, there's, there's mystery here, there's a riddle here, because Proverbs is located in the whole of Scripture. And uh, the whole of Scripture bears witness and finds its way to Christ. And so the Lord Jesus, upon that trek, the Emmaus Road, uh, directed the thoughts and minds of his travelers to the wisdom books amongst the prophets and uh, the law as well. And we find that this, uh, this book of Proverbs have uh, two roads, two roads that meet at a fork. Well, one goes up and one goes down. Uh, one is the way of wisdom and one is the way of lady folly. One leads to life and the other leads to death. And, and, and we have to ask ourselves, well, what son of the father has so much walked in the way of wisdom that he has not stumbled and fallen off to the left or to the right? As the Proverbs say a number of times, keep your eyes straight. Don't go either direction. There's a demand in this book and in the variegated situations of life to be alert to what wisdom calls for in responding and handling those variegated situations. And which son of the father has ever walked this way to truly have embraced wisdom? And we know there is only one. It is Jesus Christ. He is the only one true, obedient son who turned not to left or to right and had truly embraced Lady Wisdom. Has truly embraced because of his obedience the outcome that Proverbs promises to those who obey. Life uh, as uh, the outcome. So as you look at this outline that you have with you, uh, the first thing that the father instructs his son in, <coughs> in the very beginning, is to heed his words, to he listen to what I'm saying to you. And what is it that is he is saying? Well, he is saying, hear her. In the very first chapter uh, of the book of Proverbs uh, hear my son, in verse 8, 
uh, your father's instruction, your mother's teaching. <clears throat> and then in verse 20, wisdom is calling uh, in aloud in the streets. Uh, wisdom is calling to, to come in, to listen, uh, and to hear. And so the father is calling his son, you see, not just to listen to his words, but to listen to the, to the body of those words. Uh, to listen to those words as having their own inherent call uh, in and of themselves. And he is pointing her, pointing him uh, to Lady uh, Wisdom. And in pointing him uh, to Lady Wisdom in chapter 1, uh, then in chapter 2, he, gives the, he introduces the other woman. Look, if I'm directing you this way, oh my son, I'm telling you to avoid this woman. <laughs> even as I'm telling you to chase after and hear uh, the other one. Read in Proverbs chapter 2, that if you indeed heed his voice, you will be delivered from the forbidden uh, woman, from the other one that is uh, destructive. Seek wisdom, he says. In chapter 3, verse 13, blessed is the one who finds wisdom, the one who gets understanding, for, for the gain from her is better than gain from silver. Her, her profit, better than gold. She's more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire uh, compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. She's a tree of life uh, to those who hold her, to those who hold her fast. Uh, are blessed. And so the father urges his son over and over to heed his voice, to heed his words. And what is that foundational? What is the fundamental core principle of lady wisdom? Proverbs does not hold back in informing us uh, what that core principle is. In the very first chapter, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Then again in chapter 2, of verse 5, that if you will search for her and, and, and pursue her as the true treasure she is, you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And of course, we could not possibly leave out uh, such a definitive verse as, as Proverbs chapter 8. Uh, verses 10 through 13, uh, this uh, concluding uh, reflection upon wisdom that, that is from the very beginning uh, uh, of the creation. Uh, we're talking about uh, Lady Wisdom of, as, as being an ancient and old lady that has not lo lost uh, her true allurement and beauty to those who will indeed search for her. Verse 10 says, take my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance in the way of evil, and perverted speech I hate. There it is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what is it? it? It reflexively has a repulsion toward evil. Not a drawing, not a, not a, 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 a titillization with it or an allurement or a fascination, but a, a repulsion, a hatred. The fear of the Lord inbreeds that, instills that. And thus it stands as the opposite of arrogance and ignorance. Those are the true, uh, arrogance and ignorance are indeed the two sinners that uh, the book of Proverbs is seeking to lead the young man away from. Young men are naturally in their fallenness arrogant. They think they know. They think they know what's best for them. They inherently have deceived themselves and think they're smarter than God. But they're ignorant. Because arrogance and ignorance are Siamese twin brothers that are together and so lodged in the heart of young men in their fallenness and in their sin. But the fear of the Lord is what will slay them. 
In chapter 3, verses 5 through 7, we have Solomon's outline. Chapter 3, 5 through 7, of the, the, op, the, the correction of this very uh, phenomena in the opposite direction to take. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So the father brings home to the young man that needs to mature the call and what the core of that call is as the fear of the Lord. Listen to his words and and, and, and listen to her. She is calling. She's calling through me. I'm directing you, O oh young man, to her. Prize her. Choose her. Chase her. Pursue her. And embrace her. And so you find this, you find this theme carried throughout the book of Proverbs, and, uh, and, and the book itself is laid out, though it's a, a lot of different proverbial sayings and exhortations that often seem disconnected. There's, there's, there's structure, and as it is, there's a narrative that flows through uh, Proverbs uh, for the reader, for the young man. In chapter 1 of the Proverbs, again, I Draw your attention to your outline. Uh, to hear her, to listen to her. She's calling, chapter 120, and she's calling in opposition to the sinners of this world. They're also calling. Then chapters 2 through 9 of Proverbs, you have uh, literarily it's structured in seven uh, sections. And those seven sections uh, are a construction so that when you come to chapter 9, it says that wisdom has built her house. So as you read through 2 through 8, uh, it, it, wisdom is building her house. And when you come to chapter 9, then you're coming to this very key chapter in Proverbs uh, where, where uh, Lady Wisdom uh, now says, look, she's built her house. She slaughtered her bees. She's mixed her wine. She set her table. And now she's sending out her maidens to say, come, come on in. Come in to the house of this woman. Verses 1 through verse 6, she's urging the young man, leave your simple ways. There's the young man. He's simple. He's naive. He needs to grow in maturity of wisdom. And Lady Wisdom says, here's the house. Come into my schoolhouse as it is. Come into my place of learning and leave behind your simple ways. Then in verses 7 through 12, we we, we have this differentiation between those who scoff at her uh, versus those who say, yes, I'm, I'm coming to learn. Uh, I want to learn wisdom. Uh, I, and, of course, Lady Wisdom, she's kind of prickly. Uh, you know, she's not always pretty. Uh, she's more prickly than pretty. And you're going to expect and find reproof from Lady Wisdom as she teaches you. And then you have that center, verses 7 through 12 of chapter 9, of, of Lady Wisdom uh, and and her reproving, and the choice to make. So the first six verses, Lady Wisdom. But then chapter 9, the end, chapters 13, verses 13 through 18, you have the other woman, the woman of folly who is loud, seductive, and knows nothing, has nothing productively to give the young man. But she's calling as well. She sits at the door of her house. She takes a seat. She's calling to those who have passed by. Whoever is simple, let him come in here. To him who lacks sense, come on in. So you have two different opposite appeals as chapter 9 comes to this culmination 
point where the house of wisdom is built and she's beckoning the young men, come in here. And Lady Folly is beckoning the young men, no, 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 come in here. <laughs> you who lack sense, come here. And due to the fact they lack sense, they come to her for instant gratification. Chapter 9 is the fork in the road in the book of Proverbs. Which way are you going to go? Into her house or into Folly's house? And then in chapter 10, it says the Proverbs of Solomon. This is where, this, this, is, the, this is the library of learning. You come into Lady Wisdom's schoolhouse, and in chapter 10 through 30, you're introduced to the library of learning with all these different proverbs. All these different proverbs calling and instructing. And here is where you chase her. You chase her for these 21 chapters to know her, and you pursue her. And then in chapter 31, what do we find? You know, we find the virtuous woman, which all used for women's conferences, and how you can be more virtuous if you read Proverbs 31 and seek to imitate her. But it's actually it's directed to young men. <laughs> First and foremost for them. Because what, is, what do we find at the end is the one he has been chasing by way of his father's instruction, he is now married to. Lady Wisdom, this is the mature marriage. He has embraced her by chapter 31. He is embodied concretely. Lady Wisdom here in chapter 31. And so we see that the young man who enters that school and follows his father's advice, will indeed have the mature <laughs> wisdom in the end. And that's what the father's learning is, is, is for. This is what the father is saying to him. Catch her scent. Allow, her, be, allow to be allured by her, her mystery. Because she's not easy to figure out. You get little glimpses of her and allow those little glimpses of wisdom excite you for more that you might chase her and embrace her. That's the idea you're getting here in the book of Proverbs. And, the, and therein to proceed from naivety to maturity. To go away from folly and stupidity and move in the direction of wisdom. Choose her. Choose her is the great exhortation from the Father. Choose her. And not only choose her, chapter 9, choose her, but chapter 10 and on, chase her. Chase her, make it a, long, make it a, a life pursuit. This is, the, this is the bulk of it. The bulk is the intentional pursuit of her, of wisdom, of growth and progress. And we find in these chapters of 10 through 20 so many different kinds of things, uh, so many variegated situations of life uh, having to do with your tongue and having to do with your dealing with anger and having to do with dealing with money and... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> The training of children and, 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 and purity and, and, and so many, how to resolve conflicts. Uh, it's all found here. And, and they're all kind of like strewn together. Uh, it, there's not a, a simple, you know, section portion to move along. It, 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 it almost seems like they took individual proverbs and just kind of poured them out and... Uh, it seems like the, the idea is here is, is life itself comes at you like that. Life itself comes to you without knowing what is going to be the next thing. And, and so the Proverbs come that way in giving you wisdom uh, to, to deal with the next thing, whatever it may be. And, and so he is to grow. He is to step upward. You might say that 10 through 30 is progressive steps upward. 
because they lead to life as opposed to steps downward. And all those proverbs become little reproofs. Brick, brick, brick. And that's why I say that Lady Wisdom, she, she's prickly. She reproves. A young man who uh, wants instant comfort. A young man who wants instant gratification. Not going to find it. Lady Wisdom remains a little reserved, a little distant. And when you get close enough, you get a little prick of correction. But it's the one who hangs on. It's the one who says, there's something about her. I will not give up my pursuit of her. And he chases her. And he sees it through. Because he's convinced about something. He's convinced that what his father told him was right. He's convinced that at the end of the day, she will do him good all the days of his life. He is convinced that she's the best. She will bring him the fear of God. She will, as it is, deck him and exalt him in the gates if he only will stay with her and keep growing. And so we find at the end of the Proverbs, don't we? Chapter 31. The very end of the book. Chapter 31 of Proverbs. Having heeded the Father's call to choose her, to chase her, in chapter 31 he has embraced her. For he is married to her. Chapter 31 begins with the words of King Lemuel. It's the words about the it's advice to the king, the introduction of the king, and how a king is to be. It's not to be inebriated, which takes away wisdom. But he's to judge righteously. And how can he judge righteously without the queen? without the queen wisdom. And so introducing the king in chapter 31, we are then introduced to his queen. It's Lady Wisdom, her queen, his queen, an excellent wife. She's more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her. He will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Now if you read those verses about the virtuous woman here in chapter 31, you will find that it is echoing chapter 3 with regard to Lady Wisdom. Lady Wisdom will deck you with jewels. Lady Wisdom will bring life to you. And so now here she is, the one introduced in chapter 3. Here she is in flesh and blood. She's embodied in marriage. It's maturity, you see. The themes from the Father's instruction come here in a full-blown way. And not only that, but she teaches his children. Kindness is on her tongue. This is the exact opposite, of course, from spending your streams in the street. You have children as the fruit of your relationship that she now is teaching with embodied wisdom. There's much here throughout Proverbs for the family, for men, for mothers, for family instruction in godliness. Yet it's Old Testament, it's Old Covenant. And as Old Covenant, there's an emphasis on law. Life dependent upon obedience. What about failure in Proverbs? Well, it's kind of definitive. You go after the wrong woman, you're baked. You become part of her collection down there in the basement is the view that you're given if you go down to her house. Not a lot about recovery in Proverbs. 
a lot about the way to go, but not a lot about most young men who need recovery <laughs> and not just direction. Rather, there's a fork in the road with regard to the needs of most young men, a fork that's more like a tuning fork rather than a fork that's just two different prongs. You know, most young men, they tend to vibrate between the two. But that's where we come to, I think, where Proverbs really wants us to go at the end of the day as the new covenant in Christ. Because the New Testament itself takes an advanced view on wisdom. It's the wisdom of God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ. God's plan that Paul said was hidden for all ages has now come into clear focus and the revelation of the knowledge of God through Jesus Christ now in the New Covenant. It's as if in the Old Testament era, as, 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 as those books were given to Israel, they were unable to see through the veil as to where they were really headed. And so, too, in Jesus Christ, we're able to look back on the book of Proverbs and we're able to look at it in a Christocentric manner. Who is the one who has a lifelong passion of staying on the road to wisdom and following and heeding his father's instruction to fear God from beginning to end? There's only one. It's Jesus Christ. He's the one who's pursued obedience to his father and has pursued wisdom, the embodiment of wisdom who is his church. It is in the church of Jesus Christ that we have the repository of wisdom from Jesus Christ himself. In John chapter 13 we read about Jesus being given a kingdom but after, after Jesus announced he's been given a kingdom he says well what I'm laying my life down though for is for you. He says he loved them to the uttermost. Did Christ love his kingdom? I'm sure he did, but what he was really after was the inhabitants of the kingdom. Those are the ones he really cared for, and those are the ones he laid down his life for, that he might secure her, that the king might secure his queen. And so Jesus Christ is the one who walks that careful path of obedience, not turning to the left nor to the right, that he may lay hold of her, that he may be married to her and become a declaration of the wisdom of God for all the ages. You Indeed, we need to receive this father and son speech of Proverbs it is not just horizontal, it's vertical too, as even Proverbs begins to indicate that the Lord disciplines his sons, chapter 3. But who is the one who so discreetly, so perfectly, in all the details of the law, which the book of Proverbs is, in all of its applications scattered left and right, in all the variegated providential moments of existence, who is the one who with a clear head and a pure heart indeed walks in the Father's wisdom? Who is the one who has taken that path? So Proverbs, not only as it is, lays out for us a path of wisdom, and Proverbs lays out for us the path that Jesus Christ took path that Jesus Christ took to secure his queen, his bride, where wisdom would be embodied. And so too, Christ, the truly wise one, the perfectly obedient son, has acquired lady wisdom. And in acquiring her, his wisdom is embodied in her. And she, 
The church of Jesus Christ, his bride, is indeed the one who teaches his children. She instructs them in the wisdom of God, both in law and in gospel, both in the specifics and in the big picture of redemption in Christ. And so when we think of this book of Proverbs and uh, what it's all about, certainly Proverbs is a way of godly wisdom for fathers to instruct their son. Certainly fathers should read Proverbs to their children and have them memorize them and learn them and delight in them. It will guide them. It will, it will, it will by the power of the Spirit in union with Jesus Christ, uh, be a resource to learn Christ's own wisdom. But secondly, not only that, it's, it's the way that Christ himself took to embrace God's wisdom, to have union and communion with Lady Wisdom, his own embodiment of his bride. And as we think of those two things, and kind of bring those two ideas together, the love of wisdom is not merely for our own piety. It's, uh, the love of wisdom is a family affair. Wisdom leads us to wonder, uh, to ponder, as it is, the great marital mystery of Christ's love for his church, his bride, his queen, this bride of Christ is the repository of God's wisdom. As Paul said that chapter 3 of Ephesians, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God is, is being revealed, is being proclaimed, as she teaches her children to adore him, as she teaches her children to please the Father, as she teaches her children to pursue the spirit of wisdom, into which the church is already being identified, being caught up into the very spirit she embodies as a dwelling to his glory and to our enrichment as we press on to the final goal. Let us pray.